Am I the a-hole for calling my wife insecure and selfish on our wedding day? Well, I mean, admittedly, we're not starting off on the right foot. <laughs> so, but according to Reddit, you're not the a-hole. Hello, welcome to my channel, you lovely human you. My name is Jamie Wolfer. If you've never been here before, hi, nice to meet you. I'm your online wedding planner. I'm here to help you kind of figure out how to plan a wedding uh, without paying for a wedding planner because we are expensive. <laughs> Let's be honest, at least I can admit it out loud on the internet, which is why I've created the master plan, which by the way, if you are new here, is an online program that has a monthly subscription so you can log in, plan your wedding with the support of real life wedding planners. I have a team there. We've got live office hours. I am there to answer your questions. We've got you handled with all the perks of having a real life wedding planner without the price tag. So um, if you are in the throes of planning this <laughs> and you want to pull your hair out, you don't have to do this alone. Okay, so jump on over there to the master plan or at least take a look at it. See if it's something that works. See if it's the right vibe for you because we have got you covered. I've got you covered. So I really don't want you stressing about this. I want you to plan easily, stress less because honestly, you deserve a stress-free wedding day. How many times can I say stress in 10 seconds? Well, <laughs> I don't need to say it because I know you're feeling it, but you don't have to. I'm here. Check out the master plan. Uh, I already missed the card, didn't I? It'll be down below. For today's video, we're going to do something called AITA reaction video, which uh, have proven to be quite successful here on this channel. Today's video is going to be about the grooms, though. Because we hear about bridezillas, right? But do we give enough attention to groomzillas? I don't know. I don't think so. So for today's video, I scoured AITA wedding Reddit threads for some spicy takes from a groom's perspective. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. Am I the a-hole for calling my wife insecure and selfish on our wedding day? Well, kid, it's not, it's not a good move, uh, necessarily. <laughs> and even if it's warranted, that's concerning. I and my wife got married last Wednesday and the ceremony was amazing. Hey, way to get married on a Wednesday. Very inexpensive. We love that for us. My wife was very strict on the fact that no guest is allowed to wear white, which is understandable for females. That's considered rude or bad luck at weddings, I think. The reception was going well too, until I noticed my wife walking over to the bathroom with her face held in her hands. Well, that's never a good sign on your wedding day. Obviously, I can tell my wife was upset as we've been together for three years now and I can tell when she's upset. If you couldn't tell, her face in her hands is usually a dead giveaway. <laughs> I am sure most people could tell. <laughs> Sorry, not to belittle your relationship. I rushed across the room telling guests one minute as I hurried by them. Once I got to the bathroom, I knocked on the door and informed my wife it was me at the door. After a few minutes, I heard the door unlock and open. Uh, when I got in, I saw my wife sitting on the floor with mascara running down her cheeks. Okay. <laughs> this setup is really strong for your, <laughs> your title. <laughs> Where are we going with this? Uh, I asked what was wrong and she told me that one of our nephews was wearing white jeans and a white bow tie. I immediately thought to myself how she was completely overreacting because he's a six year old child and had no idea you can't wear white to a wedding. Did his parent though? I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not defending her just yet, but I'm like, somebody helped him get dressed. He didn't drive himself. Just saying, again, she's, Okay, I'll save my opinion. I'll save it. Oh, I told her she was overreacting, but in a much nicer way. And I said that she should go enjoy the reception and forget about the whole thing. She eventually texted her sister to come to the bathroom and fix her makeup so she could go back out and have a good night. Good for her. Rally. After a while, I saw her talking to my sister, the mom of our nephew, and I thought she was just making a conversation. About an hour later, my sister pulled me aside and berated me for my wife's behavior. Oh, no. <laughs> she said my wife had asked her and her son to leave unless she had a change of clothes for him. Oh, that's one way to handle controversy and discussions of this nature is completely bypass your spouse on your wedding day. This was far from okay for, to me, so I asked my wife to talk and explained everything my sister told me. My wife said she was completely in the right for sh what she asked, and I told her that if she kicks my family out, then I will happily leave too. That is a bold line in the sand to draw, sir, over pants. Let me tell you, marriage is about compromise. Both you and her. You threatened to leave because she was having an emotional episode. This doesn't bode well, friends. Uh, my wife started crying again and saying that this is her day and she doesn't want it to be ruined by our nephew. Okay, that's far. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> this angered me because I had enough of her ruining our day over something silly. I then said she was not only selfish, but that she was insanely insecure if she's worried about a six-year-old looking better than her. My wife's been staying with her mother since the wedding and we haven't spoken once. Her mom reached out to me this morning and said that I need to apologize right away for being out of line. I really don't believe I'm the wrong here, so what do you think, A-I-T-A? 
Whew. Okay, so before we get into reading some of these reactions, I like to usually typically give my feedback and kind of my knee-jerk reaction for what's going on here, um, even though in a situation like this, a wedding planner really has no business commenting. <laughs> but as a married woman, I can tell you, marriage is a lot. Like, y'all know this. You're watching this probably because you're engaged and you know that this relationship, it, it has its, it's not without tension, right? I think both of y'all need to just, like, have a come-to-Jesus moment. <laughs> uh, yeah, she definitely overreacted. She absolutely overreacted. She hyperfixated. This was supposed to be a situation about a groomzilla, but I think this is like a little more about bridezilla situation. I think she should have gotten a grip, but I think probably the emotional toll of everything happening and all the expectations that were placed upon her or the stress that she placed upon herself, regardless, she had a lot of feels. She was stuck in her feels. Um, and while you were within your right to kind of call her out and be like, hey, you're behaving silly. Like you need to get yourself together. I think, where it went too far was saying that you would leave if your nephew left, right? That doesn't do anything to dissolve the situation. That's drawing a line in the sand. And that is not how marriage will forever successfully work. There's got to be some sort of conversation in situations like this where you're just like, I see that you're frustrated by this. I don't share that frustration. I think you're overreacting. I think you're being a little bit selfish in this moment. He's a child, okay? So let's get back out there. Let's rally. I'm going to go get you a drink. Let's go get some dessert. Let's bond. Let's come together in this moment. I'll support you. I, I don't have to agree with your feelings, but, you know, you're you're allowed to have them. I, I think they're nonsensical, but you have your feelings, right? But I think the threat to leave was probably the wrong move. I think that was a hope to, like, make her stop talking about it and shut down and let that go. But instead, it was really, again, drawing that line in the sand. Her then staying with her mom afterwards. You guys are going to have plenty of arguments like this, plenty of conversations of this nature where you're like... Yeah, I'm gonna leave for a minute because I can't, I can't be around you. And I get that this is a big blow up for a very small situation. So I think that this is more like, I know the Redditors went towards you are not the a-hole, but I, I do think that this is more of an Evergreen sucks situation um, and less of you're not the a-hole and she is. Because having worked with countless brides and seeing how much stress that they are under, um, it's a lot. This was nonsensical. She clearly needed to be told she's, she needed to calm down, right? It was a child. Grace upon grace. Let's pour grace on the situation, right? Like I, I can't speak to what she was feeling. But I can say that if my husband drew that line in the sand, and now I, I would probably never emotionally explode for a six-year-old wearing white pants. But if my husband drew that line of sand, fine, if you make them leave, I'm leaving. But I'd just be like, well, this is just getting petty, right? Like, this is not, it, it, that's what it was. It just got petty. And now neither one wants to apologize for the situation. It's like that scene from, gosh, was it Ocean's 12? When Danny and Rusty are talking about the pancakes or the waffles sitting on the floor for several days because neither one of the, uh, neither the husband nor the wife wanted to admit defeat and clean up the waffles, so they just left it there. This is a waffles on the floor situation. I'm just, I'm just saying. Okay. Am I the a-hole for telling my fiance my daughter has to be in our wedding? I'm going to tell you immediately right now, no, you're not. Nope. Because that's your baby. Okay. <laughs> ah, it's going to be interesting to read through this one because uh, I immediately already have an opinion. And so does Reddit. The OP is not the a-hole in their opinion. I have a daughter from a previous relationship. Why did I just say that? I have a daughter from a previous relationship. I divorced my ex-wife on good terms and we share 50-50 custody of P. She is now 11. After I divorced my ex-wife, I met my now fiance. S and my daughter got along very well. After five years of my relationship with S, I proposed. S was super excited and wanted to start planning right away. She looked at venues and started asking her friends to be her bridesmaids. And then she told me she wanted her niece to be a flower girl, which I had no problem with, but I said I also wanted P to be a flower girl. S looked at me funny and then said she didn't think P would fit the part. Okay, she's a little bit older, right? Maybe that's the situation. Junior bridesmaid, but like, if the groom is asking for something, the grooms, in my opinion, don't really ask for a lot of things. And it's his kid and you're about to be the stepmother. I just... Okay. I got angry and told S that my daughter would be in her wedding. S started to become upset and said that the girls in the wedding were up to her and P wouldn't be one of them. I told S that if P wasn't in the wedding, then there might not be a wedding. I stormed out and took P to get the ice cream. P knows we are getting married and she told me she thinks she would look pretty in whatever dress S decides she should wear. And this broke my heart and I decided to text S. I told her I would be staying at a friend's and think this over. My mother-in-law texted me saying I am overreacting and that my daughter does not have to be in my wedding and I was an, an ass for saying that I should that I would cancel. So did I take it too far for saying I will cancel? Am I overreacting or just being a good dad? 
I think there's a lot more options than that. <laughs> I think when people boil down options or responses to two, it they're usually more than just two options, right? Edit, thank you everyone for the comments and suggestions. I will post an update in the very near future. Oh, there is an update posted at the top of this, but I'm just taking the story for face value and we'll, we'll kind of move on from there. So as I usually do before we go to the reaction section of this, I'm gonna go ahead and give my general feedback. I think that if you are entering into a relationship where children are already present, there is going to be feelings, there's gonna be hurt, there's going to be, even though it sounds like him and his ex, OP and his ex, parted on good terms, you know, this is still a lot of feelings for this kid. They are now getting a new adult in their lives. And I know this probably hits home for a lot of you. Maybe you have a step parent. And so to kind of feel like there's an expectation or a hope that she's going to be involved, I, I don't think that you're in the wrong for asking that or for expecting that. I think that if S reacted in such a way that was like, I didn't, I that's not what I planned. That's not what was going on in my head. Maybe giving her some time to process through that, right? Till she can come up with a formulated opinion. Maybe a knee-jerk reaction. I know multiple people in my life that I'm very close to that lead with no. I tell them something, they're like, no. Like, no, it'll work. They're like, no. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna give you an hour to think about it and then we're gonna have this conversation again and then later on it's like oh yeah that's actually not a bad idea i'm like then why do we lead with no okay so we're giving s some very generous allowances here okay maybe she just led with no but i also think that op was very well within his rights to say if my daughter's not in this wedding we could just call this off like this is how important this is to me it could have been phrased differently right hey it's really important to me that p's in our wedding it's really important to me that my daughter's involved in this. So if the expectation is that she will not be standing on your side or you don't want her to be a flower girl, that's fine. I, I can get over that. She'll stand on my side. But like she's going to be in the wedding. Just so you know that this is this is a line in sand that I'm drawing. This is important to me. This is my wedding as well. And you can pick so much of it, but this is important to me. That's a different way of having that conversation instead of I will cancel the wedding if my daughter's not in it. It just doesn't set up a, a conducive environment for having a, a healthy communication about it. It's like a do or die situation here. Instead of saying like, hey, here is where I'm at using I feel language, this is this is very important to me. And I will draw a line in the sand on this. So if you don't want her on her side, she'll be on mine. Capiche? You know? But honestly, speaking from my gut, I see this as a red flag situation. Uh, just maybe not red, but maybe like a, a light to medium orange, right? Where you're like, why are you so against this? What is, um, <laughs> why? You know, if you get hung up on numbers of people in your wedding party or height, I think that that's, that's when wedding planning is getting to you a little too much. When you're like, I can't invite another person to be a part of my wedding party or I have to invite more people so the numbers are even or she's too tall, I can't have her be a part of it. You know, that's when it's like we're losing the plot <laughs> of the situation. And if you're feeling those things, I totally get it. But remind yourself, don't lose the plot on this, all right? Let's return back to why we're doing this and why we're having people stand with us to begin with, right? So now let's jump on into the uh, comments here. Okay, I'm just doing a quick reread. She said that she didn't think P would fit the part of a flower girl. And then OP got angry and said that the daughter's going to be in the wedding. S started to become upset and said that the girls in the wedding were up to her. Like, if it's a girl, she has to say yes or no? Like, she gets to decide because what? No. Okay. Well, spoiler alert, uh, danger, 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 a bajillion red flags. Edit, crisis averted, repeat, crisis averted, all in caps. Opie's update has made it known that danger level S has been handled and kicked out, thank goodness. Opie will be going to Hawaii with his daughter instead. <laughs> and they lived happily ever after the end. Bye bye S, can someone give Opie the father of the year award? <laughs> oh... She seems a little odd to think that your daughter shouldn't take part in this important life event. I don't think that she thinks the daughter shouldn't. I think that she thinks she should have a say, right? Like clearly we already know how this ends up, but let's just play the storyline a little bit longer, shall we? Not the a-hole props to you for standing up for your daughter. That's exactly what a good dad should do. Your fiance is trying to diminish your daughter's role in your wedding. I'd be concerned that that'll carry over into other parts of your life too. Whatever BS she means by not her not fitting the part sends up huge red flags to me too. I have kids and this would be a deal breaker for me. That's fair. I would be rethinking if I wanted to proceed with a marriage to someone who was so adamant about not having my only child in their wedding. Even if she decides to give in, I would have a hard time moving past this. Yeah, again, I didn't read it as the the bride was against having her. I think she was more really firm on the ownership, and I, I could have missed this in updates, but more firm on the ownership of allowing people in, right? She wanted it to be her show. It was less of, I refuse to have your daughter in my wedding, and more of, I get to decide who stands up there with me. If it is a girl or a woman, I get to decide, and that is not for you to say. 
that's that's and I know that's nuanced but I think there's a difference here it's less of like your daughter's not allowed to be in our wedding and more of I get to make the dad, that decision not you which still is a red flag right <laughs> like let's let's like <laughs> that's that's splitting hairs at this point and clearly uh OP got out of there real fast living life happily ever after with his daughter <laughs> like that's fantastic uh but I think it's important to to kind of like understand that nuance there so um, this one seemed pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and take a look at the last one because uh, this title alone got me good. That was the, that was the hook. You see that? <laughs> oh, who put me on the internet? Am I the a-hole for telling my fiance her wedding dress choice was way too extravagant and suggesting alternatives? <laughs> Reddit agrees. You are the a-hole. <laughs> Why do I feel like, oh, uh, I always feel like Maury. Or like Jerry Springer. You are the father. <laughs> Am I dating myself? Is Jerry Springer still on TV? Okay. Uh, sorry, on mobile and throw away as she's a Redditor. Well, that's not good. <laughs> that never ends well. Uh, we are getting married in July of this year and the venue is booked and the wedding is pretty much sorted. Emma has been researching dresses and has a little scrapbook of lots of dresses she likes for ideas but is now looking to buy. All that's left to get is the bridesmaid dresses and her wedding dress. We jointly put aside 10k each for the wedding. Everything is paid and we have 6k left over, which I think could go towards the honeymoon on top of the honeymoon fund we already had. Oh, oh, I just, I'm like preparing myself emotionally for where this is going to go. We aren't the extravagant type at all. Then it comes time for Emma to pick the, her dress. I know everything is more expensive when it has the term wedding attached to it. What I wasn't expecting was a $950 dress plus a $120 veil. That's not that expensive, friend. Sorry. I'm using my dad's old tux he used for his wedding to my mom. Just had it taken a little. Emma can't use her mom's dress as her and both her moms say the style hasn't aged well, which is fair. I had a quick Google search at... Oh, no. <sighs> I had a quick Google around at dresses online and there were so many and so many like the one Emma wants for like $50 to $100. <laughs> I'm not trying to get her to cheap out on her dress, but she will literally wear it once one dress for over a thousand dollars is just insane and that can fund our honeymoon. You are trying to cheap out on her dress. Like, it's fine. It, just own it. <laughs> okay. I tried to show her some dresses I found on a recommended app called Wish. <laughs> I'm so sorry. The fact that he did this so seriously. <laughs> a Wish dress. Uh, and others on websites, but she was having none of it. I wonder why. <laughs> She is very slender, but apparently she wants it specially fitted. <laughs> it's called tailored, dear. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It turned nasty, unfortunately, because I said I refused to drop such a large amount of money on a dress, and she argued that she is using her own money for the dress. Ooh. Which isn't strictly true, as we are about to marry and our finances will be joined. Um, will be. Will be. Okay. Who? But then her mom had to get involved, and they offered to pay for the dress, but it's not a case of not being able to afford it. Right? 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 Oh, no. Okay. You would just rather use that for your honeymoon, right? Okay. Weddings are, and I know I'm supposed to save my reaction for later, but I'm going to share it anyways. Weddings are like the first time couples are spending a large amount of money on things, uh, and this stuff happens. Like, these arguments happen. It's very common where um, a fiance will be like, you want to spend what on what? I'm sorry, what? And this is where these deep foundational building conversations can start to happen because you've probably never come across something like this. A lot of people have not made big financial decisions with their fiance. And now this is happening. So it's like, ha huh, ha. Huh. So <laughs> write that down. Ha <laughs> ha. So it sounds like OP is saying like, it's not about being able to afford it. It's about the, it's about the concept of it, right? Like I, I refuse to spend a thousand dollars on one dress, but I don't know if this, Okay, mm I'm gonna say my opinion. We're gonna keep reading. <sighs> it's a dress. There are identical ones online at a fraction of the cost. Oh. No, there's not. They're not identical. They're gonna be very cheaply made. They're gonna be made from terrible fabric <laughs> and made by the hands of someone who's probably paid very little to produce that dress and um, contributes horribly to fast fashion. <laughs> there. <laughs> okay, and not a timeless heirloom piece. Uh, that she could potentially save for one of your children. A wish dress is not the same thing as a boutique dress. And I bought a used dress, so I know there's options. There's a whole myriad of stuff in between. <laughs> ah, 
I thought she'd be ecstatic to learn their identical dresses for a fraction of the cost, but she was really angry and upset. Am I the a-hole here? Is there something I'm seriously missing? Because after we argued about the dress, Emma has been extremely cold towards me. Oh, then yesterday she said if I wanted her to cheap out on her wedding dress on her wedding day that she needs to really consider if we are a good match for marriage. I'm blown away that she would say that over a dress. I told her she's like a toddler throwing a tantrum over a sparkly toy she can't have. Ooh, I do not like your turn of phrase here. That is patronizing. That was a mistake, and she left to stay with her parents, who called me to tell me I'm much more than an a-hole. Am I the a-hole here? Too long didn't read. Fiance can get a similar dress for around $100 with shipping online, but wants to blow over $1,000 at a local wedding dress boutique. Am I the a-hole for saying to get a cheaper one? Edit. Emma found this thread. I told you it wasn't going to end well. It was a mistake to post here, and I'm sorry I posted a, our problems on Reddit. I am the a-hole. <laughs> all right. We can talk about the term wedding being attached to something and then all of a sudden becoming more expensive, right? We can talk about buying a white prom dress in lieu of an actual wedding dress. We can talk about buying a used dress. We can talk about, you know, a lot of ways that we can make wedding dress shopping more affordable, right? Sure. However, there is, for many women, a very strong attachment for the dress. The dress. And whether it's invented by the wedding industrial complex, or it's something she's dreamt of for her entire life, or it's something society is telling her need to feel, wherever the source of this is coming from, a woman's attachment to her wedding dress can be very big. Can be huge, right? Like, She's been told she will have this moment where she puts it on and just goes, this is the dress. Aha, aha, this is the moment. I have waited all my life to look like this, right? And that may or may not be the case, okay? Like, that doesn't necessarily always happen. So, like, give yourself grace if you don't experience that. But it is her dress. If you don't want to spend that amount of money, that's a conversation you can absolutely have. But if she goes as far to say, I'm going to spend my own money on this, like, I, I'm going to die on this hill right? This is something that I don't want to budge on. That is a situation where you as the fiance should probably go, okay, okay, I, I, this makes me uncomfortable. It's a large sum of money, but you have chosen to say like, I will die on this hill, right? I don't know how to recover from this. I don't think it's irrevocable. Well, I'll say that. Uh, I think that OP should probably learn that there's a time and a place for his opinion, right? Uh, that there's a time and a place for where he just needs to stop. Because it sounds like he was so hyper-focused on the bottom line that he missed the opportunity to see and hear the love of his life say, this is important to me. And so I think that there is a way to navigate this a little bit more successfully. Um, but unfortunately, he was hyper-focused on this specifically. All right, let's go ahead and dive on into what some of the commenters are saying here. Um, oh, this is a super old thread. This is from like years ago. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I'm not on Reddit very often. It's fine. Uh, you are the a-hole. You say you don't want her to cheap out, but then you say you want her to buy a $50 to $100 wedding dress. That's cheap. That's cheap even for a regular dress. Those cheap dresses you're finding online will look terrible in person and are the source of so many disappointed women and jokes. Wedding dresses and their tailoring are expensive. $1,000 is actually a low price dress. Regardless of her dress type though, your reaction to her calling her names and deciding you have veto power is the real problem. I agree. You should be solving this issue together. If you can't, maybe it's not time to get married yet. You are the a-hole. <laughs> you are suggesting she gets married in a $50 to $100 dress and then when her parents offer to pay her for the dress, it's not even about the money for you. You literally want to control what she wears, an adult woman. I don't think that's the source here. I think he doesn't want to marry someone who'd be comfortable spending that amount of money. I think that's it. I don't think he wants to control what she wears. I think genuinely he's like, I cannot imagine what if this happens again? That's his deep fear. What if this happens again where all of a sudden she sees a fancy dress for $500 and just wants to go spend money on it? Like that is not how I am built financially. What if this happens again? You know, instead of having a conversation like, hey, this is a once in a lifetime thing, right? Like this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. It's the only big day. It's the best day of your life, right? This is not going to be a habitual experience. You pick this person for a reason. You probably know her spending habits. You know this is not necessarily the norm for her. So for you to be like, I don't want you spending that amount of money. That concerns me. The deepest part about this is your fear that she will consistently make these choices instead of a one-time deal of make these choices. I don't think he wants to control what she wears. I think he's scared she'll continue to spend like this. This person wrote a little bit. Um, I understand if you have different priorities with money, but it does not sound like it would be a huge deal in the grand scheme of th everything with what you shared about your finances. Let her have this one. Again, don't die on this hill. 
If anything, just let her know that something else might have to give in your budget for the wedding or the honeymoon to accommodate for her dress and let her make that decision for herself. Great. That's a healthy way of sharing this. Dude, you're the a-hole. To say it once, whatever. Okay, she heard your opinion. This is, ju- this is her day just as much as it is yours. Her parents even offered to pay for the dress because they wanted their daughter to have her day, her way, and clearly money is of no concern. That should have been the end of it. Like, seriously, sorry, OP, but your girlfriend deserves way better. The, yes, because they highlighted, I told her she's like a toddler throwing a tantrum over a sparkly toy she can't have. That is so not okay. That is not okay phrasing. That's not appropriate. That's not kind. That's not uplifting. That's And we do that thing. We do that in marriage. We do this in relationships where we say things that are not kind and not appropriate and not uplifting, right? But we do need to own when we do that. And patronizing and calling our future spouse a toddler who's throwing a tantrum over wanting a sparkly toy is really inappropriate. Where this is really coming down to is your deep insecurities about her financial decision in this one specific situation. Now, if she showed a habit of this, of spending and saying, this is my money, this is my money, I could be doing this, you should let me make decisions with my money. That's one thing, right? But if this is a one-off situation, then you need to pour some grace on this. Not to mention, it's her body, it's her dress, if she's paying for it herself, or if her parents are offering to pay for it, like, we need to gain some perspective here. Someone needs to pour a little salt on this and pour a lot of grace in the situation. I know it's four years old, but if someone's watching this and this resonates with you at all, you should probably go tr- talk to someone like a trusted source in your life about this particular situation and ask for feedback, not from the internet, but from someone like a mentor or a parent or someone who's been married for a minute who can help you kind of process through some of this. Ah, so that's what we have for this week's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching this version of AITA Groom Edition um, because it's not always the brides. Thank you. So if you even remotely like AITA videos, get on down there, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell. We've got more of them coming. I try to release like about one a month, but we've got plenty of other really good wedding advice here on this channel, if I do say so myself. <laughs> so be sure to stick on around for that. Um, you know, if you're planning a wedding or if you just like weddings or if you just feel like subscribing for more tips and tricks for modern day bride. How'd you like that transition? And until next time, bye guys.